Now, as the time goes by, it was considered to be successful. Well, not perfect, but then again, it was successful. Now, over the times, Rome become more powerful, gain more territory across the Italian Peninsula. You know, Italian Peninsula, Mr. Jeremy would explain it to you guys in the classroom. That, uh, that peninsula somewhere in Europe that looked like a boot. As they grow bigger and bigger. Now, they got, they got bigger because of two things. Because they have a very efficient military. Uh, I will talk more about it in different lectures. The way they organize their military. And Rome had this foreign policy to make friends okay, or allies. At the same time, they will help their allies to conquering their, the, the, the enemy of the allies. So, what does, that, what does it mean? I mean, the enemies of my friend means my enemies too. Over the years, Rome's go, get bigger and bigger. Turn out to be, they are not the only one who is dominant in that area, in the Mediterranean Sea. There are also another older civilization more advanced and more wealthy which is the Phoenicians if you guys remember that lecture since semester one good okay for the Romans since they speak Latin the the, the Latin word for red is Punic or Punicas Punicas okay, Punic. so that means in the title says that Punic war it means the Phoenician war you can say Phoenicians war or Punic war it means it refers to a specific period of a time of their history that they had a war with the Phoenician people or the Punicas, Punic. Imagine like if Rome and if Romans and uh, Phoenicians are like the fish inside of a small pond by the name of like Mediterranean Sea. Uh, as the fish get bigger and bigger because the fish they kind of like what they of course fish eat right. The fish eat bigger fish. Uh, the fish eat smaller fish until they get bigger. Eventually, then you will get like a two big fish. Now, the pond is just like way too small for two of them, so the war finally broke. Now, the Punic War was divided into three parts. Punic War was divided into three, uh, three, three Punic War, okay, the first, the second, and the third one. Now, the first Punic War, it happens, uh, it happens because of a, an island, an island by the, name of, by the name of Sicily Island. If you look at the map, okay, the, the boots, okay, the Sicily Island is like the, somewhere, like the small island that looks like a pistol or looks like a pizza to me. Okay. And now that Sicily Island, most of them are kind of like occupied by the Greek colonies, okay. Again, I mentioned the one about the lectures. Uh, Syracuse, that's the other word for Sicily. Oh, did I mention about the Carthage? Oh, yeah, Carthage is the uh, is the capital city of the Phoenicians. Yeah, Phoenicians have a lot of like city states. Now, the biggest and the mightiest of all is the Carthage. So you can say, yeah, capital of uh, of uh, of the Phoenicians. Now, Carthage is located in the North Africa. So one day, the Sicily was being occupied by the Carthage. Not the whole island, but then again, most of them are being occupied by the Carthage. Now. At the beginning, the Romans, they were kind of cool with that. They were fine with that. They were chill. They were relaxed. But because of there's this misunderstanding between two of them, I'll skip the details about it. There was this kind of like misunderstanding has something to do with the pirate, with the pirates. And then things goes wrong. And then now the war happens. The conflict between the Romans and the Carthage broke. So it was a war, and then for Rome, for the Romans, it was a it was a very important war because this is the first time the Roman have a naval battle, naval battle, or, or like have a war with the ships. Okay, it's a sea sea warfare, sea warfare which is requiring requires ships. It was the first time for the Romans. Now the Romans had no idea how to do it. Well, the good things about the Romans are they always adopt and they always adapt. Okay, they are tough, and then they they will figure it out. So one day they were lucky. They uh, they found a abandoned, stranded Phoenician ship, and with that kind of ship, uh, they kind of like dismantle the ship and they do like what we call the reverse engineering. Basically, you take these things, they take these things apart to find out how things work. And based on that, their founding, they make a ships. Uh, and guess what? The first battle that they had with the Phoenicians, bad. Okay, they lost a lot of ships, they lost a lot of men in that first battle. But then again, the Romans always adopt and adapt. They refuse to give up, they make another ships, they practice more. To cut the story short, the first Persian War, did I say Persian War? I mean Punic War. The first Punic War 
won by the Romans to add more salt to the insult. Is that an expression? Uh, the Phoenicians have to pay the cost that uh, the Roman have to spend for the war. We call it as the indemnity. The one who lost have to pay to the winner. Oh, must be really, really bad for the loser, yeah? <sighs> Alright, so that is the end of the First Punic War. Now, let's jump in into the Second Punic War. Now, the Second Punic War, it happened several years later. Now, at this moment, like, you know, Carthage, they got bitter. They got bitter about it. They got bitter uh, because they just lost Sicily. Now, uh, the Carthage decided to conquer another part of a, another part of the land. We call it as a Spain. Yeah, it's, if you, you look at the map right now, okay, the Spain. He, they took the most of the coastal cities of Spain. Now, most of the job, most of most of this job is being done by a father and son, uh, a guy by the name of Hamilcar Barca, and his son Hannibal. Now, Hannibal and Hamilcar Barca. Now, for your information, Hamilcar Barca was known to be the one who found the city of Barcelona in Spain right now. Yeah, do you get it? If you were a football fan, I think more makes sense, right? Barcelona, correct me if I'm wrong, known as a Barca, that's the name of the football club. So, uh, Hannibal soon realized that, hey, you know what? He, I mean, the Carthage can attack the Romes, can attack the Romans from behind. Now what does that mean? Okay, it's time for you guys to look at the map. Okay, if Spain is over there and like this is this is Italian Peninsula, they can just like travel across the land, traveling from the north and then like you know, uh, uh, entering the Italian Peninsula from the north. Now it will not be that easy though, because uh, between the mainland of Europe and Italian Peninsula, there is this kind of like mountainous region. Call it as the uh, Alps Mountains. One thing that I know about mountains the terrain is hard and rugged okay because there will be a lot of hikes there will be a lot of like going downhill it's not flat it's not easy it's not it's very difficult to travel around the, across the mountains now <clears throat> back to uh, Hannibal <clears throat> Hannibal had this kind of like crazy idea he is going to attack Rome from the north through the Alps mountain with what so they, with 35,000 men, okay, 35,000 men, and this is the cool thing, with the 37 elephant. I'm talking about elephant. Now, if Carthage is, is Carthage is in North Africa, where, what kind of like elephant do you think that they will collect? Yeah, I'm talking about like, you know, African elephant, not Asian elephant. If you remember the story about like, you know, Alexander the Great, yes, Alexander the Great had to fight with the, with King Porus from, from uh from from India with the that has also have an elephant but these are the Indian elephant which is kind of like slightly smaller than the African elephant Ele elephant African elephant is bigger somehow and more powerful and more dangerous and well so this kind of like elephant so with 37 elephant and 35,000 men they go across the Alps mountain and then unfortunately though many of this elephant died well if you think about it if you have a big ear elephants in the mountains cold place what will happen Achoo! excuse me yeah maybe they die so what happened with Hannibal instead of like the instead of like turning back home and then like forget about his ambitions to to uh, to to invade Rome no he just keep pressing on now and then oh boy he did and when he arrived in when he arrived in the in the Roman uh, Roman territory Everybody was in fear. Everybody was shocked. Now, if you think about it, if you live around 200, 300 BC, you definitely you will never see an elephant before, right? Now, maybe you guys somehow you've been to the zoo, you have internet, you watch TV, you know like what the elephants looks like. You have seen the elephant. You have touched the elephant. Elephant, and you have ride the elephant. But for these people, think about that. They never seen an elephant before. When they see this kind of like you know a huge creature what would they see is a monster from the other world of course they will freak out of course they will like what they will lose their courage to fight they flee they run in terrors so anyway so what happens next is like you know Hannibal was unstoppable he won battle uh, after battle in Rome not nobody can stop him and then it was lasted for about 16 years 16 years 
Hannibal create like destructions and terrors among the the Romans. There you go. You got this kind of like Latin word expression, Hannibal at portas, which just mean Hannibal at the gate. So, 16 years. Now, one there was this kind of like one important battle that you need to know. Uh, what I'm trying to say, it 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 doesn't mean that the Roman didn't try. They tried their best. Now, one of the one of the one of the uh, event that they tried their best is uh, the name of the battle of the battle of Can the battle of Cannae. The battle of Cannae. Yes, that's the name of the battle. Cannae is the name of a place. In the battle of Cannae, uh, Romans they were so confident that they can defeat uh, Hannibal and his men, which is, uh, if I'm not wrong, like Romans they collect with themselves about fifteen to seventeen thousand of men. Yeah, fifteen to seventeen thousand. That is about sixteen legion. Yeah, one legion is about five thousand men. Okay, there's a lot of troops. There's a lot of like you know uh, soldiers. Yet, one thing that you need to know about Hannibal. Hannibal is a military genius. In the Battle of Cannae, it was a horrible, horrible battle because the Roman they fall into the trap of Hannibal. It was a nightmare for the Roman. It was a bloody battle. Okay, it was not beautiful. Um, the Hannibal's tactic was being used over and over again by the by every kind of like you know generals in the future. And in fact, it was a become a become a official textbooks for. Uh, for anyone who kind of like learn about about uh, about war and military tactics, it was brilliant. And then, so basically, what he did, he encircling the the, the Romans, and then they were like what they were butchering the Romans, uh, the Roman soldiers, like in you know, all night long. That's crazy. However, one thing that somehow Hannibal never achieved was one thing: Hannibal cannot completely conquer the whole Roman. Okay. Hannibal cannot completely uh, capture the city of Rome. Why? Is it because that somehow he, the Rome is just like way too powerful? It's not. Okay. Hannibal just do not have enough men. Now remember about like thirty-five thousand and thirty-seven uh, elephant. Yes. Now he he lost most of his men. He lost uh, by this time. He lost all of his elephants. Uh, all of his elephants died. Uh, yeah, even though elephant is like big and powerful, but then again, they are clumsy creature, and then they are easy to be kind of like what is it easy to be uh, hurt by arrows and spear. Of course, now angry elephant is not good for the enemy, and the same time, it's not good for the friends. Yeah, so Hannibal could not have complete like the whole of Rome. They were just like they were just like creating kind of like terror. They were just like you know become. Now here comes the next person, someone by name by the name of Scipio. Now, who is Scipio? Scipio is like in, is a Roman general who had this idea, a very kind of like very daring idea, yet very crazy. And then, but then again, it's very high rewarded. He had an idea that, hey, you know what? Let's bring the battle away from our homeland in Rome, but back into like what? Back into the homeland of Hannibal. Let them taste their own medicine. So Scipio, he convinced the Roman Senate to lend him the troops and brought the war, brought the battle into North Africa, into Carthage. It was a brilliant idea, and then he did, and then he recruited a lot of like what he recruited a lot of uh, new troops in North Africa, and it was uh, the final blow that he just had to commit was to attack the city itself, the Carthage. Okay, you can see the pictures later, the Carthage. Uh, how important was the city at that time so it was there now knowing that his hometown is under attack Hannibal immediately he left he left Italy went back straight to, to Carthage to like what to face Scipio maybe if it's in a movie this is kind of like this is it it's the time where you guys to grab your popcorn and then your soda and after that you're going to watch it it's going to be kind of like the epic battle between two kind of like awesome guy Scipio and Hannibal and both of them are genius both of them are military genius so as the world hold their breath okay the night before the battle start uh, there was this conversation between Hannibal and Scipio yes it happens though even though they're enemies but then again it still can happen I kind of like you know I wish I can talk more about this kind of a conversation but I provide you the link somewhere in your uh, outline the original uh, transcript of the conversation. Well, of course, in English, not in Latin. It's supposed to be in Latin, but yeah, it's in English. It was written by Livy. And 
Roman historians in the past. If I have to paraphrase, the conversation goes like this. Hannibal was kind of like, try to convince Scipio, hey, you know what, hey buddy, can we just like, you know, call it, if, call it a day? Like, let us just have a peace, okay? I'm sorry, okay, I'm sorry. Could you please just like, uh, simply leave North Africa? Uh, I'll give you anything what you want, uh, just don't kind of like, just don't hurt the city, okay? Just don't destroy the city of Carthage. Go home. By the way, yeah, yeah. So, and then like, Scipio, he was like, what? He was politely saying, well, you know what, Hannibal, I really kind of like admire you. You are a genius. Uh, yes, you are man, my enemy, but I really truly respect you. I wish that I can follow your, uh, your, your wish to leave Carthage, but I just can't, okay? Sorry. So, anyway, what happens... Then the next day, yeah, the war, the battle itself was inevitable. The name of the battle is the Battle of Zama. It happens in 202 uh, BC. Now it was like the another epic battle because this uh, this is a uh, this is the battle that where uh, Hannibal lost. Yes, Hannibal lost. He lost because Scipio using the same the same strategy, the same tactic that the Hannibal used by recruiting Nubian horsemen. Okay. So basically, it's a heavy cavalry that I skip kind of like the details about it. Maybe next time. Uh, these are the horse-mounted uh, warriors. Okay, they're utilizing Scipio brilliantly utilizing this kind of like mounted troops to uh, surrounding, to surrounding like you know Hannibal's troops. So by the end of this battle, the conclusion is Hannibal lost, Carthage lost. Now this time, Rome they won again. So that is the end of the Second Persian War. Wait, I mean Punic War. The Third Punic War, last but not least, this just happens like, you know, years later, years later, the Romans, they decided to have another Punic War, but this time, it's not because they, it is, it was a necessary, Carthage is already greatly reduced, they're no longer powerful, they're no longer wealthy, they lost many of their lands, they are no longer kind of a, as 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 a stronger as it used to be, and the Persian War starts because somehow the Romans decided, hey, you know what? Let's just destroy the city of Carthage just for fun. Now it's not cool at all. So the Persian War starts with the it was a it was a very unbalanced kind of like war. Okay, Romans surrounding the city of Carthage, that Carthage which is already kind of like reduced, already kind of like very very weak. And then like what happened after the end of the war, of course, the Carthage did not kind of like, you know, uh, put down their arms, put down their weapon, and then like let the gates open and let them be attacked. No, 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 no. They give their best to fight, but of course, it's just only matter of, uh, it's just only matter of days, and then the city was overrun by the Romans. Now what happened next is a madness, because the Roman soldiers, they loot, they kill, they, they brutally kind of like, you know, murder everyone in the city, including like what, including innocent people, and they plunder a lot of gold and wealth from Carthage. Now, the Carthage is gone. The history of the Phoenician it ends there, okay, in the, in, the third, in the Third Punic War. Now, after the end of the war, they destroy the land by putting a lot of salts into the farmland. Why salt? The salt act as a, some kind of like a poison for the plants. I am not a farmer, I'm not a botanist, I do not know how does it work, but then again, I. I assume if you put a lot of salt on the farm, I mean on the soil, then the soil can no longer bear trees or you know plants. So that's what they do with the purpose that uh, the city of Carthage cannot be cannot be like rebuilt anymore, cannot be rebuilt. So that's what they do, and then it was a horrible. And let me end it with this one. Some of the Romans they realized something. Wow, the destruction of the city of Carthage was so great, it was so bloody, and it was like ridiculously unnecessary. And they were thinking, we are just as horrible as our enemy. Maybe someday we will face the same consequences. Maybe someday we will end like the same way that we end the Carthage. Which is it's true though. Next time we're going to talk about Julius Caesar. Stay tuned. Thank you guys. God bless.